So wait, we're just we're just we're just discarding Benny Snell, right? Like nothing at all happened Monday night. We're just done with him. Good morning to you. Good Thursday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Steelers. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into hockey and or baseball. I also offer daily shots of Penguins and Pirates where you found this. Steelers at their first practice yesterday of the short week in advance of the game Sunday in Atlanta. That's a 1.02 p.m. kickoff at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. I'll be flying down there to cover that for DK Pittsburgh Sports. And when I do, I fully expect to see a lineup card that's got Jalen Warren as RB1. And probably Snell at two, and then Anthony McFarland at three. And I'm, let's just say that it'd be nice if it was more of a split. Okay. Let's just say that it'd be nice if you kept Snell involved to an extent, just to make really sure that nothing was just mystically stumbled upon Monday night in Indianapolis. And I know, I know, Benny's not new. We've seen a lot of Benny. We've seen Benny even as a feature back. We've seen a couple times Benny succeed as a feature back and that it ended up meaning nothing because he'd go right back to not being able to see holes and whatever else. But I'm here to make a case for at least a degree of patience and open-mindedness with Benny. And there are two reasons for that. One will sound like it's got nothing to do with anything, but it really does. And that is this. Benny was a running back at Kentucky, meaning nothing but. And he was a star running back. He got a thousand yards every year. He was Benny Snell football. He had some other kind of nickname thing going for himself down there. He was a big deal. And when he came to the Steelers, he was still seen as a guy who could be an NFL starting running back. He wasn't drafted to be a backup. With running backs, you never know where they come from. So that label doesn't get affixed to you as easily as it does other positions. And it didn't go well. It didn't go well at all. And yet, rather than, you know, pout, make a scene, Wonder if he got chosen by the right team. Maybe the coaches just don't like him. What he did was he took Mike Tomlin's challenge, if not outright admonition, that said, if you want to make an NFL paycheck, you're going to do that as a special teams guy. You can be a great special teams guy for us. We'll make sure you're taken care of. And you'll obviously be a member of the running back room. Benny did all that. Benny did all that. And then when he had his chance, when he's out there lining up as the feature back, handful of yards away from the goal line, and he knows Kenny Pickett went to the sideline to call a play that involves him. And he knows that that play was being called because of Kenny's specific one-on-one trust with Benny, a relationship that they'd forged over the summer. And what he did when he got that ball was make this really smooth Le'Veon Bell-looking slide to the left and then move forward. It was mechanical. It was hitting a hole. It was everything that everyone said that Benny can't do. No one doubted the athleticism. No one doubted the ability to run downhill. But they did doubt that, and he did it. And right after this, I have a little bit of a story for you. What can you expect at Point Park University in downtown Pittsburgh? Respect, rigor, relevance. That's the Point Park pledge. You'll be treated with respect while being challenged and supported academically to graduate with career-ready, relevant skills. Visit pointpark.edu to learn more. In Cincinnati, way back in week one, And you're not going to remember this because there was a ton of stuff that happened in week one. And a special teams tackle wasn't going to rank high on anybody's list. But Benny made an absolutely spectacular athletic play to close off a Cincinnati return guy and annihilate him. 
and I mean send him cleanly in play, but out of bounds in an aerial way. And he got up, he started, he's a Steeler sideline was on the other side and he gets up and he starts going in the other way. And there's a couple of guys that come over and give him a tap on the helmet, but that's it. That's it. That's the thanks you get for being a special teams guy, including the fact that absolutely nobody who's listening to this show remembers this play. Okay. So downstairs in the locker room and guys are getting interviewed all over the place. It was a big, dramatic win. Uh, a lot of stuff happened. TJ got hurt. So there was news everywhere. And Benny's sitting over there in the corner by himself. A corner where, by the way, the special teams guys were. And I go over there and think to myself, you know, normally the way that I write, there's uh, bullets and little odds and ends that I'll include. And I thought, you know what? I, I can give him a little bit of a, a uh, tip of the cap here for this effort, meaning in print. So let's go over and ask him about it. And I do that. And I don't ask it in any particularly congratulatory way or way to go, son, or anything like that. I just, you know, ask a question about it, whatever. And uh, the interview ends. It was one question long. <laughs> and I go and I start working the rest of the room the way everybody else was. 10 or 15 minutes pass. And the room is pretty much getting closed. Benny's all dressed now. And I'm talking with Minka Fitzpatrick, who you'll recall was the star of that game. I waited till all the other reporters got out of there because I had stuff that I wanted to ask Minka about some of his behavior or whatever else. And Benny walks up to me while I'm talking to Minka and just says, hey, thanks, man. And I just kind of... Like, I don't want to say anything because I don't want to put him in a weird spot in front of Minka. But I just nod, you know, uh, in an acknowledging, appreciative kind of way. And he has this big smile on his face and walks out. He's not had the best relations with members of the media in his time in Pittsburgh. And that sometimes can be damaging as well, not because the media can do anything to you or anything like that, certainly not in an environment run by Mike Tomlin, but more because it can just be a, yet another thing that gets you down when the room is open and all these evil reporters come in and it's just another negative. And this is someone who has found a way to make positives out of negatives. I am not inclined to bet against people like that my life when we come back j1q this portion of daily shot of steelers is brought to you by our friends at mike's beer bar they're located directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. They are the one, the only, the premier destination in Pittsburgh for craft beer. More than 500 craft beers available, more than 350 of those local, and more than 80 of those on tap. Mike's can't be topped, not for beer, not for the awesome kitchen and menu that's available, not for all the special events that are going on there. Check them out online at mikesbeerbar.com. Mike's Beer Bar, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. Today's J1Q comes from Will, who says, DK, Mike Tomlin has been a proponent of a bell cow at running back if the situation lends itself and we see more success down the stretch with a running back by committee. Do you feel those successes could finally steer Tomlin toward that direction, meaning the committee for 2023? Will, I, I like giving people the benefit of the doubt, as I just mentioned. I like keeping an open mind, as I just mentioned. I don't think you're ever going to see Tomlin get away from the bell cow thing. I think the closest... We've ever seen that from him was later in in Le'Veon's tenure in Pittsburgh when D'Angelo Williams came along and provided such a different look on every third series 
that Tomlin fell in love with that component of it because he knew he had the smart and experienced offensive line that could adjust to the very different running styles of both Bell and Williams. But that's it. That's it. Every other situation that he's had has been predicated on the feature star back. and That even includes how they are treated away from game situations. I've shared this with people before, but I'll do so again. The moment Najee Harris arrived in Pittsburgh, he was the number one running back. And I understand that's completely Captain Obvious material, and I'm not criticizing it. He was a first-round pick, and as I mentioned earlier, we'd seen plenty of Benny. So that's the way that was going to go, but he also gets it in practice drills and everything else. He is the guy. Najee is the guy. When Najee is healthy, he will be the guy. Look what it took for Jalen Warren just to get on the field, meaning even like spelling Najee on the fourth or fifth uh, drive of a game. That's what it takes to convince this coach to have someone else at running back. He doesn't believe in saving them. He doesn't believe in uh, doing something that prevents their wheels from falling off. Running back's wheels come off. They come off regardless whether you manage them carefully or not. They just do. It's that kind of position. There's nothing else like it in professional sports. Sad to say, because some of the game's more impressive, more accomplished athletes are out of the game just like this. But I've long believed that that's this head coach's response to this, meaning I've only got him for three, four years. I'm going to get absolutely everything I can out of him. It's not my job to worry about what the next team gets out of him. It's not my job to worry about anything other than the Pittsburgh Steelers winning that game on that Sunday. Say what you want about that, including ripping him, including calling him self-centered or selfish or whatever. He's all about that one thing. And he believes that the way to get there is by having that RB1 who just carries himself a little bit differently, wants the ball in his hands with the game on the line. I, in my opinion, doesn't count, happen to be with you on this one. I'd love to see more fresh legs going in and out of there, especially if the Steelers were ever to be able to find a situation that would benefit them in terms of different looks the way the Lev and D'Angelo thing once did. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everyone listening to Daily Shot of Steelers, and we'll do one more of these tomorrow before I, like the devil, head on down to Georgia. Georgia.